Listen, amongst the many things you have to worry about, I'm sorry I have to throw another one at you, but Meredith Newman does a great job and is a reporter and an embed investigative reporter with the Illinois Answers Project and the BGA about the next big disaster on the horizon, and it's flooding. Flooding. Flooding is yes. a major concern. Insurance is not about to bail you out on this. And Meredith joins us now. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So how long do we have and how strong a swimmer do I need to be? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to predict as much as I tried to get the experts to tell me when I can expect so. But that's the thing about flooding. It's really threatening to our state, but it's incredibly difficult to predict what areas are going to be hit and um, how to prepare for it. So we're talking about the record level of flooding stuff like we saw last year getting broken again? Well, so that's what's been happening, according to experts. Um, I talked to someone from the National Weather Service, and this decade, even though we're a few years in, has already seen the most number of extreme rain events compared to decades since going back to the 1950s. So as, as this expert told me, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when we see the next rain event. But it's hard to say when that will exactly happen completely agree with you meredith we live in city chicago in the middle of the block and i swear every year you know the water just in the in the basement you just gets a little bit more a little taller and it, and it totally worries me so i guess what a solution would be what overhead sewers something like that but it's going to cost money whatever you decide to do or how to try to trying to flood proof your home an already existing home that's however you know decades old well what did you find meredith is that the deal is it because we have hundred year old piping in the city all over the place is that part of the problem yeah it's a combination of factors as most difficult things are first is obviously climate change spring and summer are expected to get even wetter and there's going to be continued to be an onslaught of water and rain events that are unpredictable to um, say what areas are going to get hit and are difficult to prepare for, like I mentioned. But also it's infrastructure issues. And so stormwater systems and infrastructure that was built decades and decades ago, sometimes even longer than that, aren't prepared or built for the amount of water that's coming in. Uh, and also something to note in terms of Illinois, this is a state that was made up of wetlands and marshes and right. prairies, which experts told me were great sponges to soak up water and prevent stormwater runoff and flooding. But now that's been built into farms and cities and towns and parking lots and, and stadiums. And so water really doesn't have a place to go. So it's a, it's a combination of factors, but the infrastructure problem is is definitely a concerning one. Meredith, does that include road infrastructure tour too? As far as you know, where where you're located on a particular street, if there's extra potholes, if there's a sewer in front of your home, et cetera. Well, I think it's definitely a neighborhood problem. Research and experts have told us that poor communities, neighborhoods of color, definitely tend to be more vulnerable to flooding, going back to just the investment in infrastructure. Um, and so that's definitely, definitely an issue. And it, it can depend on, on where you live. As last summer, a lot of areas on the west side uh, were hit incredibly hard by the July storms. And um, well, Des Pla that, you know, Plaines, uh, you know, and, oh, and sure. just got hammered. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, so what what <laughs> I just can't even believe this is coming out of my mouth. What sort of government backup plan is there to save us from all this? Well, that's something that we're exploring um, in this ongoing series. Um, but I think in terms of Chicago, there's a lot of different agencies involved and which makes it difficult in, in some respects. Um, so we'll be examining different state projects, green alleys. Uh, a colleague is working on a story looking at how green alleys are being used as a green infrastructure project. Uh, another colleague is looking at Rain Ready Chatham and how that was a promising flooding program that's been caught up in bureaucracy. And uh, another story that we have coming out is about the state buyout program in which the state will buy people's homes that are on floodplains and vulnerable to flooding. And so you can move elsewhere. Um, so there's different things that we're examining in this series. But as you can see, there's no smoking gun. There's no one fix to, to this problem, unfortunately.
That's what I thought was fascinating in your article, Meredith, is that there are multiple agencies, including I just thought it was the Water Reclamation District. But no, now there's, you know, the uh, the Department of the Environment and there's different agencies that all have to kind of weigh in on this. So when you have too many cooks, is it does that become a problem, too? I think so. I mean, you know, it's it's hard to say, you know, there's a lot of hands, obviously, in this process, Um, you know, the state does have this state water plan um, where they focus on the state's most pressing water issues. Flooding, of course, is part of that that they've put out and are planning to do so about every decade or so. Um, So there is that plan. The city doesn't really have an equivalent roadmap. Um, Some older people have been pushing for that, um, but there's definitely no state unified plan um, in terms of the city of Chicago. Um, And of course, we don't know how it's going to all be paid for. Um, but you know, you can pay me now or you can pay me later because nothing is quite as damaging as water. That's true. Uh, Meredith, get some hip waiters on, continue to report and let us know what you find. Thanks so much. Thanks, Thanks for being Meredith. on. Yeah, we did put those over, the, it, it's the overhead sewers, right? Where you have to dig and it, it costs a lot of money, but I guess in the long run, you have to do it. Otherwise, you know, everything's well, just going to keep flooding. Ignore. Yeah. Well, and it leads to the question, too, if you happen to live near a river or body of water, yeah. will that be reexamined and all of a sudden your house, which was outside of a flood zone, suddenly becomes inside of a flood zone and now your insurance is going to go through the roof? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, or you have to have special insurance, right? Well, I mean, you don't want a Florida situation no. where the insurance you can get is incredibly expensive. You know, the first time, our, our we, we don't have a finished basement. And part of the reason we don't have a finished basement is we got flooded twice. Mm. Yeah, us too. And um, in not having a finished basement the first time, um, my insurance agent said, oh, did you not have the flood rider? Oh, no. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, the flood rider. It's only like $135 a year. And I go, would that be the thing you didn't tell me about? Because <sighs> I lost like $20,000 worth of stuff right. in the basement. So check with your insurance. Yeah. There's my advice. Start there. Check with your insurance to make sure you have whatever flood coverage is available mm-hmm. and that you can afford because a lot of it is not even available to people. If it is available, though, take advantage of it. I did not know flooding is Illinois' most threatening natural disaster. I thought it was Brandon Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> what?